Hey guys, I want to encourage you about 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It's, it's just a, such a great scripture. It says that if any person is in Christ, he or she is a new creation, a new species of being which never before existed. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. What an idea. What a life-transforming position. The, the new birth that Jesus talked about to Nicodemus in John chapter 3 is available to us to this day. 2,000 years ago, someone came into the human spectrum, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, fulfilled all the Hebrew prophecies concerning the Messiah, walked in miraculous things, was obedient, suffered and died on the cross, paid the ultimate penalty for our guilt sentence of sin, and brought significant change to the world. You know, I've, I, I see on YouTube, there, there's so many different subjects uh, that, that are they're, they're just it, so many ideas, that the, you, tracks you could go on, recipes, exercise, hobbies, um, you know, tutorials, and you can tune in on how to build uh, a wooden deck for your backyard or, you know, it, it just is, is so abundant. Uh, but I want to tell you that Jesus came to give life and give it abundantly. And I've noticed many of the subjects that are out there in the public forum really are, uh, they're not all bad. I mean, some are just like kind of things to do to keep yourself busy. They're amusing, but sometimes we could become so amused that we lose sight of the heart of the matter. And the heart of the matter is there's a God who created us. Not to be in just cold, uh, lockstep religious formalism, but to connect with him, to know him. The Bible says that he made all these things for his pleasure. So it's really more about him and his, his purposes than it is about me and my purposes or us and our purposes. But we human beings have such a self-orientation but the Bible says to put on the new self. And this is where I think true quality biblical Christianity uh, turns everything around for us. That we get our eyes off of ourselves, off of our instant immediate gratification, off of our needs and off of our wants. And we... We, we shift and we look to him. And wh what, what do you want? I have some friends that really love the Lord. And uh, just even in their conversation, uh, it inspires me. I'm aware that the Lord is the priority of their life. And they're not like under obligation uh, injecting religious phrases into their conversation. It's like, it's different from that. It's just so focused on him. I, I know people that have grandkids, and uh, they'll talk to me about their grandkids. You know, that's something that's important to them. I have, I have a friend who's an aviator, and he loves talking about his aircraft and flight. And I really enjoy it, listening to his that topic, because it means something to him. But that even that guy preeminently above that is he has a rock solid uh, devotion to and affection for the Lord. And people like that inspire me. And, you know, my hope with these devotionals is that it sows toward that. It, it, it stirs your attention toward that. Given that we're so drawn, I could feel it for myself just into these, what they call the rabbit hole of of ideas, you know, and just um, because the eyes of a man are never satisfied, you know, and there's this 
this thirst for knowledge and uh, um, in our, you know, our three pound brains who are like very sophisticated God made computers, you know, we, <laughs> I think it's important that we, we download the right information into it, you know, so my idea here is that there's power toward us who believe and, and in a belief system, it's, it's what you put your confidence in. I have beliefs. You know, I, I know the naturalist view believes that everything happened in a big bang and it was accidental and there's really no, therefore no purpose for it. It's just, it's random. Uh, there's not, there's not a plan. A deist would say, well, yeah, there's a God, but he's no longer involved in human affairs. And that really falls short because Jesus, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him. And he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. And that also he's a very present help in trouble. And the Lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. So that's current. And he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. So I'm not a deist. I'm, I'm a theist. I believe in a God who's a very present help. I believe in a God who is avail abundantly available to help in a tight place. And it says in Ephesians chapter 1, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. And I pray that for myself, for you, for us today, so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And look at this, verse 19. And what is the boundless greatness of his power toward us who believe? What is the boundless greatness of his power toward us who believe? I think the movie Oppenheimer won the... Uh, picture of the year for, for the uh, the Academy Awards this year. I saw the film and, uh, you know, it, it was about this power of the, the nuclear bomb that was created by Oppenheimer, then unleashed during World War II twice. And it, it, it's all terrifying and destructive. Well, God's power is... It's awesome. It'll strike awe in you, but it's to heal the sick, save the lost, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, you know, help the hurting. He's the, the spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus, and it was to help those that believe. And I want to say, man, what get your belief system uh, anchored in and tethered to the word of God. And you'll be able to stand through whatever challenge you face. God bless you.